What's up, world? It's your boy Joe Jack. I'm back. Link episode eight. Today we got my boy Josh. Got a pretty dope sneaker collection. He pretty heavy. I've been hearing his name for a while, so I reached out to him, told him I wanted to pull up. So that's where we're going today. Check out his collection. Stay tuned. What's up, world? It's your boy Joe Jack. I'm back. Episode 8, Link. Today we linking with my boy Josh. He got a crazy sneaker collection. I've been hearing about him. He's a little younger than me, so I've been hearing about him. They said he was pretty much the go to his generation. I'm going to go to my generation, of course. <laughs> but they say he got a crazy sneaker collection. I hit him up, told him I was going to pull up on you. So we here. What's up with you, bro? Nothing much was going on. Yeah, I got my... Got a little bit of my collection here. It's about, you know, 15, 20% of it. Uh -huh. A little something, something. But, yeah, you know, sneakers been been a part of me uh, for as long as I can remember. So, excited to be on here. I see you. I've checked your Instagram. You got a lot of old pictures like you've been doing it for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, what like what all started it, though? So, pretty much what started is, you know, just as, as long as I can remember, you know, my dad was always in the, in the shoes, you know, Jordans, Nikes, uh, things like that. So, he, when he had me, you know, when my mom had me, he just really just started buying me shoes, you know what I'm saying? So as, as, as long as I can remember, you know, being, I probably remember back to, you know, three or four, you know, just I always remember having Jordans on my feet. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate, you know what I'm saying, growing up to have, you know, hardworking parents and grandparents. So they always rewarded me uh, with certain things, you know what I'm saying, as far as, you know, as long as I did good in school, you know what I'm saying, gave my best at sports and uh, anything I did, you know what I'm saying, as long as I went hard, you know what I'm saying, they rewarded me. And one of the things they always rewarded me with was shoes. That's, that's, and, uh, what you wanted. that's what I wanted, you know what I'm saying? After like, a while, you yeah, know, that's, I feel that's important because, it's like, you know, a lot of people, like, you know, he's spoiled, but like, yeah. if you're able to do it, then do it, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, kind of reward you for going hard. Like, say you had good grades in school, mm -hmm. scholarship athlete, like, why not get you what you want if they're able to, right? But you're gonna have people hate, yeah, you're gonna, have, you're gonna hear the chatter, like, mm -hmm. he's spoiled, he think he all that, yeah. if you know. If it wasn't for his parents, some, 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 but don't be mad at me because what my parents did. Yeah, they did what they had to do. Position to be all right. Yeah, that's what's up, and that's important. Like you said, with your dad have, being a sneaker collector and stuff like that, he got a crazy collection too. Definitely, yeah. I mean, his, you know, twice as crazy as mine is. You know, what I'm saying, I'm, I'm still trying to catch up to him. He all, we, we always go back and forth. Like, oh, I got more. He got more. Well, he always try to tell me I got more than him, but I know I don't. Uh, so we kind of go back and forth competition wise now that I'm older and you know buying my own shoes and everything yeah, like that. But let him know we coming for you. Yeah, we coming. Link, <laughs> coming for you. Yeah. So, uh, but like that's important because he understand. Cause like growing up, like you know, my grandma bought me a lot of sneakers. My mom couldn't really afford them when she was able to afford them. Then she bought them, but it was like spending. You know, back then it was at least one fifty, one fifty, two hundred dollars on a pair of shoes. Like that sounds crazy to a lot of people. Yeah. But your old man was already in the game, so he understood. Mm -hmm. So it really wasn't crazy to him. Yeah. So he definitely wanted to bless you. That's important, though, man. Mm -hmm. So what uh, what what do you do though? So as far as what I do right now, you know, I graduated college, uh, you know, last year mm -hmm. in May of 2019. So now I'm a financial advisor. I got a contract with Northwestern Mutual. I'm independently contracted, mm -hmm. uh, but my main contract is with Northwestern Mutual. And uh, I specialize in helping my clients or future clients, uh, you know, with risk management, wealth accumulation, and then wealth uh, preservation and distribution. So all those different phases of, 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 you know what I'm saying, getting your assets together or trying to obtain assets and things like that. I help people through all those, those phases, you know, trying to help um, not only our community, but any community, um, you know, people in that community uh, reach generational wealth. You know what I'm saying? That's something that I've always been big on. So I got into this career so that I could be a driving force, not only to to accomplish that myself, but to also help other people do that. You know what I'm saying? Especially on a day-to-day -day basis. people in our community, because we didn't really see that growing up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you learned and now you're kicking down knowledge. You said you was a, you was a, you had an academic scholarship and a sports scholarship? Yep, so coming out of uh, Auden High in 2015, you know what I'm saying, I had multiple scholarship offers, you know what I'm saying, for football. Um, I ended up going with McKendree, you know, they gave me, you know, mostly uh, uh, 
sports scholarship, mm-hmm. uh, and then they just supplemented it. You know, what I'm saying with some academics since my grades was was pretty good in high school. So, so you're pretty well accomplished, huh? Yeah, I say so. You know, I'm a little bit. You know, what I'm saying I always just really, you know, my family they always instilled in me hard work. You know, what I'm saying regardless of what you're doing, whether it's school, sports, you know, so anything you do get always give your 110 percent effort. So I always did that in the books and always knowing that I wanted to go to college. You know, what I'm saying that sports was gonna be my avenue there. You know, what I'm saying we, you know, my family they hard, they work hard and everything like that, but. I knew that we wasn't finna be paying for college out of pocket. So if I wanted that to be a reality, you know what I'm saying? I had to make some shake on my own as far as paying for that. So sports was my avenue for that. And uh, God blessed me with the opportunity to have scholarship offers. Ended up going to McKendree, graduated from there. And now I'm, I'm in the business world. That's what's up. And that, that's like very important <clears throat> because like growing up, like, you know, I didn't have really a bunch of mentors to point mm-hmm. me in the right direction, you know, to, but and then the people that did talk to me, they really wasn't accomplished. Right. You know what I'm saying? And thinking back on it, like, that's probably why I didn't listen to them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even though, because everybody got game. Yeah. Everybody, and I'm always willing to listen, but it, it, it sounds better coming from somebody that's accomplished. Definitely. Like, you're pretty accomplished, and then you can speak people, people language. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's important as far as distributing, distributing your message. Mm-hmm. So, like, I like what you're doing, but... Forget all that. <laughs> I'm here for the sneakers. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, for sure. I see you got a nice spread. You got a nice setup. You mm-hmm. know, one through 17. But then you got other gyms. You got yep. Easy, Asics, Foams. What's that right there? We got the Weirdo Collection here. So, you know, I'm, I'm a guy. You know, I'm on the internet. You know what I'm saying? Instagram, stuff like that. And I'm one of the people, you know, I don't hate on nobody. You know what I'm saying? So, I actually... Um, was looking at somebody's page one time and they added uh, a page called Weirdo Collection mm-hmm. and uh, I just you know happened to just click on it went to his page seeing that he was dropping some shoes and man I I just love the way the shoe looked mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying uh, it kind of got that Balenciaga feel kind of that designer design look, look you know what I'm saying the designer runner look to it but it's not too big not too doing too much you know what I'm saying I kind of like the you know the double lace mm-hmm. um, I kind of like it you know what I'm saying the, what it says what do you want right there on the shoe you know what I'm saying? Kind of a little message to yourself. So really, I just like the concept of the shoe. And uh, it's, it's he, different. It's different. When you step out, everybody mm-hmm. ain't gonna have that. Definitely. So uh, so he he dropped some colorways. Um, and uh, they sold out quick. Luckily, I was able to get the teal pair. And uh, so when people see them, they're like, "Man, where you get them from?" And I tell them, you know, say so weirdo collection. Shout out to them. Um, that's what support. I got those from. A little different. Yeah, support, support. for sure. That's what's up. Yep, black business for sure. I like them. Uh, I'm gonna have to. We were the same size. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> You'd be like a kid in the candy store in my collection. I already know. Yeah. But you got a lot of dead stock shoes. You got, like I said, you got one through 17. Mm-hmm. Is that, as far as Jordan silhouettes, is that where you stop 17? Uh, I missing said. 15. I'm missing 15. Yeah. I am missing 15. Uh, I wasn't even for sure if I was missing 15 or not. I remember I had some back in high school. I think I hooped in them, and to be honest with you, I don't know what happened to them from there on, but I'm missing 15. Um, I do have, like, some 28s, um, some things like that that I hoop in, but as far as when you think in retro, uh, they pretty much stop at 17. That's pretty much where I stop at, and then I got stuff here and there, like I said, up through 28, 23, you know, a little here and there, but as far as all, all the way through, we stopping at 17 pretty much. So, and then you said you have more shoes, like mm-hmm. just like hooping and kind of, you know, messing them up. Yeah. And then you also told me that you, you, you reselled a few pairs. Yeah. Like that was kind of part of your, just see, that really wasn't part of my generation. Yeah. It was so hard to get the shoes. It was like, you go to the store, they got your size or they don't. Mm-hmm. It wasn't no, you know, there wasn't <coughs> much resale back then. Right. But now it's like common to just resell shoes. So mm-hmm. speak on that a little bit. Yeah, so like, in in my generation, you know what I'm saying, with with through middle school and high school is kind of when I started, you know what I'm saying, I got like I got my first job when I was about 13, 14, getting paid on the table. We ain't going to say uh, the company's name, but they was they was they was paying me to do some things around their business. And uh, so that was like when I first started buying my own shoes. Mm-hmm. But then it was like once you paying, I wasn't making a whole bunch of money. But when you paying, you know, what I'm saying 160, 180 dollars for some shoes, that's a lot out of your pocket at a young age. And so. My thing was I started seeing how resale was doing and I know people was making a lot of money off of it. So what I would do was, you know, I'd get a shoe, uh, might wear it. Like I said, I'd post a picture, wear it a few times to school. 
let you know I got them. And then, you know what I'm saying, flex. it might, little flex, you know what I'm saying, and then then somebody else might want them. And if, if, if oh man, let me get them, you can get them. I'd sell them to you for 140, 120, whatever, and that money just gonna go to the next shoe. And so that's kind of how that went. And that's crazy because, like, to be able to sell a, a used pair of sneakers, like, to the average person, that sounds crazy. Like, yeah. you know, somebody wore these. Yeah. But yeah, you keep it in good condition because, like, sneakers have become an asset. They got a whole stock market for it. Mm hmm. Yeah, but you see, you got some phones over there. Yep. You got two. They they look almost the same. What's the difference? Yeah. So they look almost the same. And when uh, like I got being funny sometimes, it my mom will go see my collection sometimes, and maybe she might notice a shoe and like, why them? Why you buy the same shoe twice? And I'm like, yeah. it ain't the same shoe. Oh boy, they look the you know they're the same color and everything like that. But what people don't realize is it's actual differences to these shoes. So when you're looking at these shoes right now, they both phone posits, but there's actually a lot of difference to these. This one right here, this is the phone posit one. And this is the phone posit pro right. now they dropped in the same year originally in 97 but if you look at the side of them you know what i'm saying one got the pro got the nike sign on the side and the, the phone posit one doesn't and then if you flip them around uh the pro got phone posit on the on the heel tab and then this has nothing on the heel tab and then you look on the back you know what i'm saying the, the ones got the penny hardaway logo on them and this one just has the nike sign so you know, to us sneakerheads, that's a difference in the shoe. You that's know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where some people say, oh, ain't no difference to them. There's a difference. They go in my outfit. Yeah. You know, what, you know what I'm saying? But there's a difference to the shoe. It's a difference as far as history and things like that. Uh, so I'm pretty heavy on the phone posits. Uh, it was actually one of the first shoes, you know what I'm saying, that was 200 plus uh, when, when it come to copying them. So like when, when people in the sneaker game, if you got phone posits, you know what I'm saying, people know that you you grinding somehow, yeah. some way because you... Yeah. Because if you got, you know what I'm saying, multiple phones, you know what I'm saying, they know the ticket on them ain't cheap. So, so did they flood the game? Did they, first phone did? I don't think, I wouldn't say that they did with the original colorways. They kind of threw me off, you know what I'm saying, with the going with all the asteroid phones and all that extra, you know what I'm saying, to them with putting, basically I call it like pictures on the side, you know what I'm saying, when you think about the weatherman that dropped yeah. years ago, stuff like that. Uh, what about I feel the like galaxies. Them galaxies ain't never gonna die. I, them ain't gonna never die. <laughs> galaxies ain't gonna never <laughs> die. Them paranormal. Yeah. yeah man, I'm going for crazy. Yeah. And to be honest, if I can get my hands on some of them, I will. Yeah. You know what I'm saying for the right price. So uh, I don't think phones can ever really be dead though. If you if you t like simple colorways like these, yeah. they'll go crazy. Like you know what I'm saying. So Nike, if y'all listening, man, drop drop some of them classics, man. We waiting. And I be looking at like the majority, of, you know, we in the Midwest, so the majority of people's sneaker collection be Mike. And I be trying to explain to mm -hmm. people, you know, we, we live in Illinois, yeah. St. Louis area, like Chicago, four hours away. Yeah. So it's, it's very common for us to be, you know, infatuated with Mike. Yeah. But I like the variety though. Like mm -hmm. you got your Asics, you got your Yeezys. Like how you feel? You got how how you feel about the Yeezys? Yeezy came hard. Yeezy came hard, man. Yeezy came and, and, and swept the game. Yeah, man. I feel like, you know what I'm saying, everybody know he made his comments about, you know what I'm saying, Jordans and Yeezys, but yeah. you can't do nothing to respect. He holding his own when he, when it comes to the shoe game, you know what I'm saying. Uh, the way I feel about the Yeezys, man, you can't really, when you're looking at this shoe, you know what I'm saying, it's so versatile, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. I mean, to be honest, you can wear this to the club with the right fit. But you can also throw you on a little Adidas track suit or just jogging a, a, a jogging fit, you know what I'm saying, to be comfortable on a nice sunny day. It's still a flex. Though. It's still a flex because you got the Yeezys on. So it's, it's I look at this as a very versatile shoe. And then at the same time, you know what I'm saying, I like to be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? So the shoe look good. It's very comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Kind of feel like pillows on your feet. You know what I mean? Uh, so I feel like this shoe... It's got a lot of different qualities to it, so I I'm, I'm, I I'm I mess with the Yeezys. How do you feel about that? Cause they they kind of watered that down, they be dropping crazy colorways. Yeah. So you stick more to like the OG colorways. I stick more to like the OG colorways. You know what I'm saying? The simple colorways, something that I can wear with multiple different outfits. I really like to stay away from shoes that like. I might buy one outfit that I can wear with that, and then I can't never wear it again because it's too hard to. We definitely talked about that. So you more mm -hmm. of the like OG colorways or the base colors. Like yeah. You ain't really with all of the extra stuff. Like yeah. You said, because it'd be like, you know, one pair of shoes, and it's like, I only got one shirt. Yeah. Two shoes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they kind of just sit and collect and dust. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Well, uh, so what, what, like I said, it's just like, as far as you can remember, what was, like, the first shoe that just, like, like took off? Like, as far as collecting. You, I remember you said that your dad put you on sneakers, mm -hmm. but, like, 
you know, going to middle school and high school and yeah. seeing people's reactions and yeah. just kind of coming into yourself, mm -hmm. you know, being able to dress and stuff like that. Yeah. What was the first sneaker that you remember that just like, yeah, this is where it's at? To be honest with you, and it's not even my favorite shoe as far as the Jordans go, but I remember when when I was in elementary school going to Love Joy and the, and the um the fives dropped the black the the uh, metallic fives, mm -hmm. the metallic fives dropped, and uh, it was just something about the shoe that I liked the net on the side. It just I liked it so many different things about that shoe, and then after that I knew like shoes was me, and uh, that's my thing. You know what I'm saying? And, and I remember when I was going like back then, like you know when you get to high school and you and you change out for PE and all that extra stuff. Like I was doing that back in, in elementary school cuz I already knew, you know what I'm saying, my dad working hard, you know what I'm saying? He buying me these shoes. I ain't finna mess them up. So I would take a change of shoes and clothes to school with me, you know what I'm saying? So I took care of my shoes you back then. Sure. Yeah, I was when it came to the shoes, like I ain't finna, you know what I'm saying? I know Pop spent his, his money on these. I'm gonna keep them clean. So I remember uh, the Metallic 5s. It was something about that shoe when I first got it, like the lace lock, just all that different stuff. Like, I was like, man, this is a nice shoe. And then going to school and, and people wanting them shoes, you know what I'm saying? And they, but they couldn't get them for different reasons and stuff like that. So, like, oh, man, you got the Jordans in there. Flexing. Yeah, funny story. Like, uh, I don't know if she's going to see this or not, but I got a girl that I call myself dating uh, back, in, back in elementary school. Nothing serious, obviously, like fourth, fifth grade. Yes. But I remember when she broke up with me, you know what I'm saying? And it was... You know, one of them things like I wasn't really tripping, but one thing she had told her friends was that I don't care about nothing but my shoes. You know, she what was saying? right. <laughs> she was right though. At that time, like that time. I ain't care about nothing but my shoes. Don't step on my shoes. You know, what I'm yeah. saying don't scuff these. So I don't really remember what you know, what I'm saying what happened or why she said that. But now that I think about it, she was right. She Back was then, right. I ain't cared nothing about that. And I'm going to get these straight A's just so I can get the mics that dropped the day after. So, <laughs> and that's yeah, that's that, that's funny, but. Like I said, I, I can't even say I was that mature, mm -hmm. to be honest. Like, cause I, man, I ran through, I got a decent amount of shoes now, but if I didn't mess a lot of shoes up, mm -hmm. like I said, I, I go somewhere and they talking about hooping or something and I'm, I'm lacing them up. Yeah. You know, trying not to scuff them, but once they messed up. They done. They, they yeah. Done. They just hoop shoes now. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for the next one to come out. So, yeah, man, you got a crazy collection. 11, you got some OVOs. Mm -hmm. You got a nice collection. Got a little bit of everything in there. But speaking, you know what I'm saying, on the resale thing, I, I be kicking myself in the ass sometimes now. Uh, just looking back now that I'm grown, you know what I'm saying, I, I got, you know, income and all that stuff coming in. So now I'm mad at myself for using that as a source of income before because, like, now I'm thinking, like, just so how many shoes that I had in the past that I could still have, you know what I'm saying, because I've been wearing the same size since the start of high school, you know what I'm saying. Well, but, the same shoes that you talked about selling for 160 mm -hmm. or something, they're going for 300. Yeah, because back then we ain't have StockX and all that. You know what I'm saying? So how, do you, how do you feel about the like the, the way the sneaker game used to mm -hmm. be and where it is now? Like, like to me, I told you, I got a love-hate relationship. Like I said, I like the resale because yeah. I'm able to get stuff from different regions. Yeah. You know, it might be an overseas release. Mm -hmm. It might be a West Coast or East Coast mm -hmm. release. So I like that. I just don't like the 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 hype. Like yeah. the price is going yeah. crazy. Like I don't like that. So yeah. how do you feel about it? Uh I feel it pretty much the same about it, you know what I'm saying, as far as having different avenues to get a shoe if you're trying to, because, like, in the area we in, you know what I'm saying, we ain't in a big city to where we get them big drops. Right. Uh, so we still got access. But as far as, you know what I'm saying, the prices and things like that, I kind of don't like it just because, um, you know, people just using it as a, as, a, as a way to get money, which I can't knock nobody hustle. Not but hustle. at the same time. It's still got, it's a passion. Though. Yeah, it's a passion. And I feel like a lot of people, they don't have the passion that we got. Passion, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Culture. Yeah. They don't even know nothing about the shoe. They just know that they heard that if you get this shoe, you can resell it for this. You know what I'm saying? So at the same time, I can't knock the hustle, but I just wish, you know what I'm saying, they'd have found something else to resell <laughs> other than what I like. You know what I'm saying? But, uh. You know, it just make you just want to go harder just to get the shoe so you ain't got to deal with the reseller. So, right. you know. Well, man, I think um, we pretty much hit it. Like you said, you got these is most of your shoes. You got more, which we're going to show. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you got a lot of positive stuff going on. Like, I like the collection. Joe Jack approved. That's a big deal. You know For what sure. I'm saying? For Joe sure. Jack approved. So I appreciate you being on the show. Keep doing what you're doing, man. You're going in the positive direction. Appreciate you. Yeah, my boy Josh, you can follow him on Instagram, Facebook. What's your Instagram? My Instagram is underscore underscore three juice one. Mm -hmm. 
um, Facebook, Josh Lovings is my name. Uh, also follow my business page, Josh Lovings slash Northwestern Mutual. Um, get in contact. Um, but it's, other than that, man, just make sure you're tuning in to Joe Jack series link. Also, make sure you're tuning in to Reason of Doubt podcast. Um, support, man. And we got thing. We got a lot of good things going around in this small town, and it's gonna blow up. So, grind, yep. It's your boy Joe Jack. It's been episode eight. We out.